So um, let's look at how you could possibly um, parallelize. So the basic idea between uh, uh, the basic, uh, the, this is called distributed search. And the basic idea there is uh, you're going to leave portions of the index that you build sitting on different machines. Um, and uh, when a query comes in, you need to run that query against the index. So what you do is you submit it in parallel to all the machines. Each machine does a retrieval on its portion of the index, sends you back a partial uh, a list of scores, and then you combine uh, the scores, uh, merge them into a single ranking, and return the top of the ranking uh, to the user. Right? So. The, 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 the different options that you have at this point is how do you partition the index? So uh, we went over the MapReduce construction for the indexing. And if you did MapReduce, what you would end up with is on, uh, sorry, on each machine, you would have a complete index for a fraction of turns, right? So machine R1 would have a complete index for he and a complete index for likes. And machine R2 would have a complete index for um, ink. So, um, that is splitting the index by term. Um, another way you could do this is you could actually split it by uh, document, right? So uh, if you didn't want to do MapReduce for some reason, right, your mappers, the ones that tokenized each set of documents and emitted the scores, what the mappers can do is they can just take a chunk and index that chunk. Presumably that chunk is small enough to where you can fit it uh, you can do indexing uh, efficiently enough. And, that, and then that machine has a portion of the index that just covers, say, documents one through five. And then another machine covers documents, uh, you know, five and, uh, or six and seven. Right. Uh, so let's look diagrammatically at what retrieval would happen. So I'm, I'm assuming the second case, the indices are split by documents. So uh, the first machine, the first uh, mapper, I guess, uh, it stores documents one and two, the second one, three, four, the third one is six and seven, and so on. Um, so what happens in this case? Uh, a query comes in. For, for an index that's constructed like that, you actually have to take your query and send it to all of the uh, collections, right? Because you don't know which portion of the index uh, contains matches to your query. So you would send the query to all of the collections. Each collection, each machine would execute the query against the index and send you a set of results. So maybe, uh, so maybe there was no matches from M3, but M1, M2, and M4 gave you the following ranked lists. And each list includes document IDs and scores. And then the job of you after the retrieval has been done, the head node has to take these lists and merge them in some way, right? Um, so that merge could be as simple as, uh, as just resorting them by decreasing score. Uh, that, of course, assumes that each of the machines runs exactly the same scoring function. So if each of the machine does BM25 with the same parameters, then your job is simple. You can just merge the scores because they will all be comparable to each other. Right? Um, an interesting twist on this problem is uh, meta search. Right? Meta search is where uh, you write the head node, and M1 is Google, and M2 is Bing, and M4 is uh, Baidu. Right? So you take your query, you send it to all the search engines, and each one of them returns a set of results to you, and then you try to merge them in the hope of coming up uh, with a better ranking overall. Now the problem there is. Uh, you get a, um, first of all, these search engines don't return scores to you, they just return positions. Uh, and even if they did return the scores, you wouldn't know how these scores are uh, computed. So merging these uh, ranked lists is devilishly hard, and there's, uh, it's, a, it's a whole cottage industry of methods just for that problem in and of itself. Um, but even if, you, uh, even if you fully control these engines, even if you know that they all return the same scores, and, uh, and you know what the scores are, um, when you do this, there's still something that they have to do, right? There is, um, so can you think of one central piece of information that they all need to share so that you can combine results together meaningfully? So is there a common piece of knowledge that they all need to have? I'm sorry? The what? Oh, the document. 
So that depends on the scoring function. It depends on the scoring function. Okay, so take something that we know. Take you know, take the idea of weighted sum. Yes, document frequency. So uh, the total document count, but the, it's easy because it's one number. Uh, but the document frequency, remember, uh, you need IDF for ranking things. Right? And the IDF better be the same across all the collections. Otherwise, your results from M1 and your results from M4 are not going to be on the same scale. They're not going to be comparable to each other. Right? And you could say, well, you know, if you just sample randomly, this wouldn't happen. Uh, unfortunately, that won't work because of Zipf's law. The tail is just too big. So all of these nodes actually need to share a common um, IDF table, and that can become a bottleneck. Um, so, would this happen if would this happen if we split the index the other way? If we split the index by term? Okay. So, so the comment here is you would need uh, the length of the document. Yes. Um, okay, so the length of the document, you could potentially have one node that just stores document lengths for everything, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe the head node has access to that. But would you need the IDF? Would the IDF need to be shared? That's right, no. So you don't, uh, you don't have to, because each node in that case would just have an index for a single term, and that node would, would be the, the final authority for the IDF of that term, right? Because that's the only node that deals with that term, right? So whatever it says is the IDF of the term, that is the IDF of the term, right? No other node is going to contest it. The problem here occurs because M1 and M4 might have very different notions of what IDF for a given term is. Maybe node 4, through some twist of fate, is populated with aardvarks. So it actually thinks that aardvark is a high-frequency term, and every other node disagrees. That would be a problem. If you have the word aardvark on only one node, then nobody's going to disagree with it. So you don't need to synchronize uh, document frequencies. So, so there's actually interesting questions when you're distributing a collection. There's lots of, there's lots of little decisions that you need to make, uh, how you split, and that has lots of implications for how you're going to be merging uh, the results in the end. OK, so let's summarize where we are. <coughs> for, the, for the last three lectures, we've been talking about indexing. Uh, the basic idea is we're looking at our collection as a matrix. Rows are document uh, vectors. Columns are inverted lists. We talked about, um, we talked about uh, Zipf's law in the beginning of the course. Zipf's law means that most terms will not occur, uh, will occur in very few documents. And this means that this matrix is very, very sparse. So when you're storing your inverted lists, you should use a sparse representation uh, for the columns, basically. Uh, uh, lists of tuples, and, and you want to keep them ordered because that allows you to use linear merge, which is basic operation that keeps popping up again and again and again um, in, 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 in all the algorithms that we talked about for processing this. Um, so that's the basic index. If you have phrases or if you have structured documents, you want to use proximity or extent indices. That's the way to embed the structure in an index. We talked about index compression. Right? So uh, very simple techniques to get the indices to take fewer bytes on disk. Uh, and the big steps there are uh, you use delta encoding to convert big numbers like document IDs to small deltas. And then you use v-byte encoding to, squish, uh, to squeeze uh, those deltas into a smaller uh, number of bits. Um, so when you do that, that uh, you can no longer access these lists in a random uh, in, in a random manner. Uh, if you still wanted to do that, you would use uh, skip pointers, which are basically uh, checkpoints into a compressed uh, list. <laughs> For constructing the index, so we went about the na uh, we talked about the naive way, and we talked about why it's not a reasonable way of doing things, right? Because index doesn't fit in memory. Uh, so the core idea of doing it is you construct partial indices and then merge them together. We talked about how to do that with MapReduce, and we also just talked about how to do distributed search, which is basically uh, you build an index in a, in a parallel way, and then you just leave it sitting at the nodes. You don't, you don't aggregate it into one big chunk. You just leave it sitting there. Um, and uh, we talked about query execution techniques. 
things right. So trim at a time, it's fast, but you need memory to store the array. Document at a time, it's a lot more flexible. There's a lot more heuristics that are available for that. Uh, it is disk intensive if the indices are stored on disk. Um, it's not as fast as trim at a time, but again, there are more heuristics for that. So you might actually uh, be able to get document at a time to perform faster. Um, caching. Uh, you only really do it for very frequent uh, queries because there are better ways in which you could use your cache, and uh, and we talked about some heuristics for doing that. All right.